Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you today for VCU Children Mental Health Symposium. In looking at the lineup of presenters you've heard today, I'm confident you've learned a great deal and are excited about implementing new ideas and best practices to help navigate the adolescent and young adult years. Adolescence and early adulthood is an important and vulnerable time in human development. It provides tremendous opportunities for enrichment and growth, and adolescence can set the stage for the rest of our lifetimes. A great deal of research points to this stage's influence on the relational development, identity formation, and decision making that shapes our adult lives. With this comes areas of risk and unique vulnerabilities. For example, the majority of adults who use substances regularly report that they began using as adolescents. Also, approximately 50% of psychiatric illnesses begin by age 15, and 75% begin by age 24. But by intervening during this period, we can improve well-being, redirect previous childhood adversities, and set the stage for abundant adult lives. We can do this by promoting prevention strategies, improving access to services for this population, workforce development on adolescent needs, and by identifying and reducing disparities that disadvantaged youth of color experience. The pandemic has upended our social connectedness in significant ways. There has been an unprecedented increase in screenings for depression and anxiety. Mental Health America has reported that those under age 25 have been very impacted by the pandemic, with roughly 9 in 10 screening with moderate to severe depression and 8 in 10 screening with moderate to severe anxiety. The number of youth experiencing major depressive disorder increased by 93, excuse me, 99,000 across the country from last year's data set. In Virginia, this increase represents a 13% prevalence rate of youth or around 83,000 Virginia children. DBHDS, in partnership with the Virginia chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics and the Medical Society of Virginia, conducted a statewide survey of pediatricians, family medicine physicians, and family nurse practitioners to understand the behavioral health impacts of COVID-19 on children and adolescents who were seeking primary care services. Of the nearly 150 survey respondents, 88% said more of their patients are presenting with mental health symptoms since COVID began in March 2020 than previously. Close to 80% of the primary care providers reported that since March, compared to the same time last year, they are seeing anywhere from a slight to moderate increase, which would equate to about a 30% increase in mental health issues in the children and adolescents they are treating. The top presenting issues are increased anxiety, depression, and behavioral issues that were not present before the pandemic began, and these span across the developmental age range of children. Social isolation and loneliness, parental stress related to COVID-19, and access to child psychiatry services ranked as the biggest mental health needs doctors were seeing in their patients. Here in Virginia, we are addressing this problem in many ways. First, I'll, I'll talk about Step Virginia, which is Virginia's model to add a specific set of behavioral health services in communities across Virginia. One of the Step Virginia services will expand outpatient services through increasing the number of full-time employees to provide outpatient services for children as well as adults. A second Step Virginia service will expand crisis service for children to help avoid inpatient hospitalizations. Next, the Virginia Mental Health Access Program, or VMAP, is a pediatric-driven training, consultation, and referral model program that increases capacity for primary care providers to treat and to respond to common mental health conditions for children and adolescents. Integrated behavioral health screening and treatment within primary care settings is integral to addressing our workforce shortage in child and adolescent psychiatry. 
In addition, DBHDS has developed new virtual trainings on adverse childhood events, or ACEs trainings, and have trained about 2,000 providers since May 2020 to better equip providers to treat and help tre children who've experienced trauma. Also, DBHDS oversees youth mental health first age, which, which assists with capacity building to address and promote mental health by training school personnel. This pro provides the schools with the opportunity to address the needs of individual students, as well as policy needs within local school systems. One fine example, Virginia is one, uh, one final, excuse me, one final example is Virginia is only one of a couple states that requires by law that ninth and 10th grade children in the public schools receive mental health education. We must have a strong system of care with statewide access to community services that are at the right time and the right level of, of intensity to keep adolescents in their communities and reduce the need for out of home care. So in light of all these efforts, this afternoon session promises to be both timely and informative since we will be discussing service aged out foster youth. Many have histories of instability or trauma, making the programs I mentioned moments ago all the more critical. Aged out youth also, also experience a homelessness rate of 20%, an incarceration rate of 25%, and a high school dropout rate of 42% within two years of exiting the foster care system. This next session will provide an overview of how comprehensive programming and strategic advocacy can change the trajectory of lives of aged out youth. Two excellent speakers are here to share their extensive experience and expertise with you. Both are from the Children's Home Society of Virginia. The Children's Home Society has served Virginia's vulnerable children and youth for 120 years. That's since 1900. We will be joined by Nadine Marsh Carter, the President and CEO. Nadine has provided legal counsel to adoptive families at the Children's Home Society, served on its board of directors, and adopted her two children from the agency. She also practiced law for several years at Hill, Tucker, and Marsh Law Firm, and served as the direct, executive director of Volunteer Families for Children, in addition to a variety of nonprofit and, and philanthropic leadership capacities. Joining Nadine will be Deidre Gregory, who's the manager of the Possibilities Project at the Children's Home Society of Virginia. Deidre's been at the Children's Home Society since 2017. She has 20 years of experience working to serve children and families in Richmond City and surrounding areas. She's also been a public school teacher in North Carolina, and she transitioned to the mental health field where she began working directly with at-risk teens in residential settings. We are very excited to hear more from Nadine and Deidre about the Possibilities Project and how it addresses the many, many challenges faced by youth who have aged out of foster care. Again, thank you very much for having me here today, and I will turn it over to Nadine and Deidre as they share their important work improving the lives of both the youth they serve and the community.